So when you have a spring, a spring actually will exert a force proportional to the amount of stretch or compression. So the, the magnitude of that force, the magnitude of it, is equal to F and is equal to K times X. K is a spring constant. Every spring has a different constant. We'll tell you how you find that. <coughs> now the direction of the force is always what? Backward. What does that mean, backward? If you take a string, a spring, not a string, if you take a spring and you just lay it down, not doing anything to it, it's going to reach that distance. What happens when you compress that string? Spring, not string. What happens when you compress it? Notice X moved in that direction. Which way the force is pushing? The force is pushing to the right, because if you let go, it's going to push it forward. And what happens when you stretch that one? If you take your hand and stretch it, stretch the spring. So you moved it, you moved it this way. X was moved in that direction. And once you let go of that spring, which way is it going to move? Backward. So notice. F is always backward to X. So the way we write the equation for a force of a spring, we go F equals negative K times X. K tells us the direction is going to be. So if X is positive, X to the right, the force to the left. If X to the left, the force to the right. It's always backward. And our book labels that F of X, just to be different, so you know that's actually a spring. They don't want to use F of S, because we use F of S for what? Static friction. They use capital F and they use X. They know that's the force by a spring. Now, how do you find K, spring constant? Let's start with that. I do that as part of the experiment in the lab. I pulled some different springs. I said, can you tell me what K for the spring is? So I take my spring and I attach it to the ceiling or to a board that's, I mean, to a nail that's attached to the wall there. Let's say the ceiling here. This is the ceiling. And I take the spring and I let it dangle. And it reaches this, this length. Now I take a weight, not the same, same string, so I want you to see them side by side, and I attach a mass to it, maybe, I don't know, 200 gram. And I watch and see how much this string is going to stretch. I'm having a hard time springing string today. The spring is going to stretch. So this we stretch the spring in this direction by a value of x. Can we find what K equal to? Well, let's look at that 200 grams. The 200 grams, there's two forces acting on it. We get the weight down, which is what? The mass times gravity. The mass is 0.2 kilogram. Remember, a kilo has a thousand gram. Okay. 
1.96 Newton. That's the weight. What else pulling on that? Pulling upward. And how big is that force? <coughs> we know the direction is upward. That's what the minus sign tells me. But what's the magnitude of that force? K times X. The magnitude of a force by a spring is K times X. Now in the lab, I said to you, take your ruler, take your meter stick, and let's measure that distance. So you go and measure the distance from here to here, and you go, that move 12 centimeters. I'm just making that up. <coughs> so once you know how far it moved, you can find what K is. Now the reason this one is no longer moving, because these two are equal to each other, Kx equals the weight. K times X. X is what? 0.12 meters. 12 centimeters divided by 100 <coughs> equals 1.96. Can we figure what K is? It's 16.3. Now, what are the units? Newton per meter, the units for K. The weight is in Newton. The distance is in meter, so Newton per meter. What that means is if you want this to dangle down one meter, you attach 16.3 Newton here for weight. So you can figure out how many kilograms. So I can actually predict now if that spring is really a long one, I'm not going to break it. What will happen if I attached one kilogram, two kilogram, three kilogram? How far would it stretch? So if I go now and I put if I put a mass equals one kilogram, can we find what X will be? How much would I stretch it? F equals what? K times X. F here, when you attach the one kilogram, is really the weight. And the weight is one kilogram, it's mass times gravity. The mass is one kilogram, gravity is 9.8 equals K, which is 16.3, that's from the previous part, times X. How far would it go? So once I'm in the lab and I figure out what K for that spring is, I can predict how far it would stretch if I put a one kilogram, two kilogram, three kilogram, half a kilogram. What's X equal to? Point six zero meters, which means 60 centimeters. So if I attached one kilogram, it should stretch 60 centimeter. What's the big deal about knowing how far? Bungee jumping. Seeing people attached with that, that rope actually works as a spring. Somebody better calculate at a weight of this, because if you miscalculate, usually they have concrete or water down there. You're yep, so you better know how far would it go based on the weight. You say, okay, if a 300 pound person now comes in, that's the weight. We know what K for that one. Can we figure how far we're stretched? And if it's farther than the ground, then wait a minute, we have a weight limit on this. Nobody can be over this weight to do that because you're gonna break your neck.
You're going to hit that water. You're going to hit that ground. Is the K constant in this? K is always constant, yep, for these, for the spring. The only way K will change if you destroy that one, which means what? You keep using it, using it, using it. Eventually, you notice that when you look at a spring, it looks like stretched. So when that happens, that, you know, the value of K actually get less and less, but you destroy the spring, basically you have to get another one. And with the rope, the same thing, stretching and stretching and stretching. So it will change over time. Then. It will, yeah, just like um, the fiber in our body there. You know, your muscle, you know, stretch, exercise, 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 you stretch and stretch and stretch, and finally, like, it's not as strong as it used to be, you know? It's not like, I shouldn't say strong, it's not flexible as it used to be, or, Bouncy back, the word I'm looking for is, what is that word I'm looking for? Doesn't elasticity, yep. Mm -hmm. It's not elastic anymore, like it bounced back. Like, you, know, you know, perfect example, shorts. You buy these shorts, and some have these rubber elastic on them, and you put them on, they hold tight around the waist, like the athletic shorts. After a while, what happened to that rubber waist there? Put in the dryer and use them and all this stuff. You put on, the thing falls to your knees. You know, oh, what happened here? You know, you lose elasticity. It's a spring. It was the same idea. So how would bungee jumping know if the spring is worn out and K is less than it's supposed to be? Well, you better make sure. A couple of things you do actually with that, you gotta, just like an elevator, when they say the maximum weight is 200 pounds, trust me, it's probably 600 pounds. They just want to make sure. So when I do the, if I was doing the calculation for them, I say, you know, the maximum mass, if I say the maximum um, weight is 300 pounds, you probably can put 600 pounds till not hit the ground, because I want to make sure it stays short. Safety. Now, if it breaks, that's a different story. Sorry. Sorry for your loss. I don't know what to tell you. Done. <laughs> the rope got weakened. Sue the company that made the rope, not me. You know, when people think of a spring, they only think like of a spring. But like a bungee cord is another application for it. That field that you see, that um, artificial field, when you run on them, they're spongy. That works like a spring. That's why you need a quiz for Yeah, well, no, when you, you know, it's not, it's not bad on your body, it absorbs that shock there, you know? Uh, the stuff people use for snoring on their nose, athletes use to keep their nostril open. They attach the glue there because it's like bouncy wants to open it to, to make sure actually you're getting as much air as you can. So this way you're not snoring. Also, if you're an athlete, you're getting a lot of oxygen so your muscles will stay fresh. You see these athletes wear these rubber thing around their nose. That's the same idea as the spring, you know. And after a while, again, you can't see, use the same strip again and again and again. First, it won't stick. And second, it's not as strong. I mean, it's not gonna open as much as it was opened before. What are these called, the nose one? Um, Nasal strips or something, I don't know. You see them, they, some athletes use them, you know. I'm sure they have a terminal, I mean, um, some name, fancy name by doctors or the inventor. You don't want to call them nose strips. Nobody will buy them. We can actually use spring here as a break. And you see them actually in rides, trains, actually trains, runaway trains. You ever seen with the, the last stop for a runaway train in case that brakes don't work? Anyone ever seen that? In Boston they have them. If you're the last stop for the train on that road, you will see this piece of steel here, massive one, and as attached there's a wall here, and there's this massive spring right there. So if a train somehow, somebody hijack a train and go full speed, they don't want to hit the wall there because once you hit the wall, that's complete stop. Everyone's dead on that train. When you hit this one, half the people are dead, but half at least injured. Not everyone's dead. So this actually compress it and slows it down. All the toys that you see and like with the kids play with them, they use spring for them to load them. Shoot darts, you know. You can use them in rides. Athletes use them, track and field. When they put their legs in them before they get going, that gives you that little push forward almost when you lock your feet in them. When you push back, the minute they blow that gun, they fire the gun, that runner will take off, 
and that little you look at them there's a little spring on them they compress it to give you that little push forward you know so there's a lot of application for them but it's always k times x and again the minus sign you're going to see the minus to indicate is backward so when an athlete sits on them so here's the carl lewis that's the name from the past or hussein bolt they have that track it looks like this their foot in it and they so they push down on it they're pushing down to keep them in once they fire that gun this one will give you a spring load so it gives you that initial push like somebody get behind you and push you so to start faster you know all athletes use it so he doesn't have an advantage over the rest of them Let's see if I can find some examples here in our book oh, everything's shut down on mine butchered my name oh god I can't spell my name okay if not I'll make an example for us mastering physics e-text That session, really short session they give us, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, and it shuts off. You don't touch it for a while, like two minutes, it logs you off. That's the part I can't stand. Newtons, here we go. Springs and springs. Let's see if we have anything on springs. If not, I'll make something. Okay, I don't see anything, so I'll make something up. <coughs> we'll do this. I'm trying to think of a real life example, and I'm drawing blank. Try to see if I can see pictures. That'll give me a real life example. No. Which one? Uh, how, how does it work? I don't. I don't know much about cars. I'm horrible with cars. You gotta tell me what, yeah. Okay. Oh, I mean, uh, I know he's saying now, okay. How about somebody like on I've seen a lot of people, uh, that's all right. Um, I'll, I'll do this. A car is moving. Let's use this car. I'll try to combine stuff from the past with something new. I'll flip it, flip it this way. Instead of a car, how about a uh, roller coaster, six flag? You're on this ride. You start at the top, initial velocity is zero. Assume no friction. And now you're on this glider and you're going now, final velocity is I should make a straight line because otherwise we're gonna be dealing with other stuff. You're moving this way. So you're not going on angle, otherwise we have to deal with it, other stuff, so we'll wait on that. That's coming up next. 
in Chapter 7, 8, Conservation of Energy. Um, you travel a distance of 10 meters here. You reach a final velocity of 20 meters per second. But to stop here, find out the brakes don't work. So you're on that one cruising. But Six Flag is not going to take a chance with that. When they designed this, they actually put, in case the brakes don't work, they put a, a spring here that you're going to hit it. This is going to hit it. It's going to compress it there. And let's give you K for the spring to be 300. It's a strong spring. It's not a weak one. And let's say this car has a mass with you in it, you know, one of those rides, uh, 200 kilogram. That's the cart and the two people in it. And the question is, once you hit that to stop it, it's going to compress it. And how far did it compress? What's x equal to? I try to combine the old physics with the new physics. Try to think of a lot of stuff to put in this problem. So let's break this story into two parts. <coughs> let's look at it up to this point. The car was moving down. Don't worry about this spring. It's not even the picture. So this part here. What do we know? You started on incline here, initial velocity of what? Zero. Final velocity equals what? 20 meters per second. The change in x, you traveled what? 10 meters. Why did I give you this information? What was the significance of that? Yes, we can find the acceleration. Equation number four, I think. Plug it in. 20 squared equals 0 squared plus 2a times 10. Change in x was 10. a equals, ooh, ooh, you're really cruising. 20 meters per second squared. The brakes don't work. You want to put a friction or no friction on that thing? You want to put a friction? Oh, okay, make it a worse. Okay, let's put a friction here. That means I have to give you the angle here. We can make, let's say it's uh, 30, you're moving really fast, so it has to be a big angle. Let's say a 40 degree angle. Now we're going to break into the color parts here. So let's look at the second part of the story. Here's the second part of the story. This is a 200 kilogram. It has the normal force pointing upward. I have to give you what mu k. What else we have? We have the weight straight down. 
weight, which is mass times gravity. The mass is 200. Gravity is 9.8. So what do we got? 1960. What else we got? You say you want friction, right? So I'm UK, let's give you some UK to be 0.5. We get the friction force backward this way. Mu k times n. That's kinetic friction. And now this one is going to come in, slam into this one. And it's going to compress it in that direction. Now let's look at that weight. Somebody was walking behind you. I hear the click, click, click. I didn't see you. <laughs> so let's look at it again. Two hundred. I'm going to break the weight down into two component. Mg sine theta in this direction. Theta is what forty degrees. Mg cosine 40, the normal force, the friction force. And again, we're going to slam into <coughs> the spring right there. I could make the problem a lot easier, make it flat and no friction. But we're having fun. Let's put in the numbers. The mass is what, 200? Uh, the mass is 200 times 9.8 times the cosine of 40. 1501. This one is 1501. So what's the normal force? One five zero one. Mg sine theta. That's the w the force down. Two hundred times nine point eight times the sine of forty degrees. One two sixty. And the friction force is what? Mu k times n. Do we know what n is? Yeah. Do we know what mu k is? Mm -hmm. Mu k is what? Point five. Point 0.5. Point 0.5 times the normal, which is 1501. 751. And what is the spring? When you hit the spring, which way the spring is pushing on us? So it's going to be pushing backward. How big that force? K times X. And when we designed this, the engineer said, listen, we need to slow this one down when it comes to us. We need to slow it down at a rate of acceleration equals what? Let's pick a number for the acceleration, something reasonable. Notice it's coming to us at 20, like 60 miles per hour. 
20 meters per second. I think my number was right. That's about 50 miles per hour. I don't want to slow it down in zero time. I'll kill everyone on it. And I don't want it to be traveling this fast. So is that what happens like when it actually stops? Like on a roller coaster? Well, on a roller coaster, actually, if you notice, they have the piece of metal there. Yeah, the brakes, they come in metal and rubs against the metal and slows you down slowly. So it goes like this. As you're opening that, it's really a wide gap like this. So it's, so it's not tight, but as you get closer and closer, it's getting tighter and tighter, and the friction is getting larger and larger. They do not want to stop you in zero time quickly. Just imagine if you hit the brakes, what happens to you? Whiplash, everyone. So we have to do a slow. So let's make the acceleration here is negative, which means slowing down. So as you're approaching this, we want this acceleration of negative three meters per second squared. We want you to stop. I don't want it to go six miles before it stops, but I also don't want to kill anyone. Notice I'm coming with acceleration 20 meters per second squared. So that's a large acceleration. I can't just make it stop in half a meter there. So the acceleration here is, once we hit that, is negative 3. Now let's see. Let's look at which way we're moving. We're moving down, right? Let's clean some of the stuff. I'm moving in that direction. The rest of the stuff I don't need. I know the acceleration is what? Negative three meters per second squared when I hit that coil there, the spring. What are the forces on this one in that direction? I got 1260 in this direction. That's this one. I got the friction force pointing in that direction, which is what? 751 and I got what K times X pointing in that direction I don't care about up and down I really did take care of them I'm moving that direction if I'm moving to the right that says this is actually larger than that the net force equals mass times acceleration. What's the net force acting on that? 1260, that's the component of the weight coming down, minus the 751, minus K times X equals mass times acceleration. Now, did I give you a value for K for the spring? What was K for the spring? 300. 300, okay. So 1260 minus 751 minus 300 times X equals the mass, which is 200 times the acceleration, and the acceleration is negative 3. I'm moving this one there, moving this plus. <coughs> it's gonna travel 3.7 meters. Oh, I already did the math. I saw I forgot 3.7 meters so that number is was it 11 one 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 zero I think when you do all the other pieces when you bring this to this side it becomes a plus you take this one to that side it becomes a plus so it's going to travel roughly four meters before it comes to a stop at a safe speed. When you go to water park in Florida, they have them, those slides all the way down, you go straight down. 
in them. How do you stop? You get the water, the pool, and there's a little thing with the water there. As you go through them and all the water going through your shores, you come up and say, where's my, uh, my bathing suit now? You know, <laughs> Because that's actually how they stop you. It's a long one on the ground. As you're going through that water, you're pushing the water away, and that's your friction force. Same thing when you dive in a pool. You dive into the pool, the reason you hit the bottom is what? That friction force as you enter in the water is going against your body, slowing you down. What do divers and swimmers like Michael Phelps and these guys do before any race? They shave their body, they wax their body to make sure it's smooth, because any little thing is a friction slows you down. So when you look at all these swimmers, they have no hair on them. They shave their head. They wear that cab, special design cab, to slide through water like nothing. When you dive, the divers, what they do with their arms? To open the water becomes like a point. You enter it and you push the water away and you enter the water so less friction, you know. If it wasn't for friction, once they hit that pool, they keep going. Bottom of the pool, and now we got uh, 60 dead people floating in that pool there. <laughs> one after another, they, they keep wondering why they're diving, just dying there, you know. So friction is not that bad, but springs actually, we use them in games, to design games to fire darts. We use them to stop an engine that's runaway engine. We use them as backup brakes, you know, use them on turf fields. So your body is not being killed there when you're running all the time on, the tra on that track. That's not good for your knees and joints. So that will work. Actually, one of the nicest track, and if you look at almost all the physics book talk about them is Harvard. Harvard track and field. If you walk on it, it's so spongy. And it's designed that way to work like a spring. It's really like, it is like, you step on it, your foot sink in it, you take off almost. It's neat, so you can run on it, it doesn't do any damage to your body. You know, one of the nicest tracks actually. Because they can afford it too, you know.